Left to the right, top to the floor. When I say black history, say it's yours. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. And we say it loud and proud again. There's no America without the African. Fighting to get it equal. Black history, the story of the people. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. It's yours. Only 28 days in the month of February. It's just a kickoff, we don't stop till every Textbook and every class give up the glory The true and living facts are his and her story People wanna know why we still celebrate it Road been rocky and we made it, we elated Our survivors, strivers, fighters, singers Get us dropping names like we have butter fingers Rosa, King, X-Truth, the greatness I leave Fred Douglas, these are the basics But how about Bessie Coleman, the fly aviatrix Or Katherine Johnson, who helped launch the spaceships Or Louis Latimer, illuminating home of Dr. Shelley Jackson improving telephones. Last week, we continued our Black History Tour through the state of Kansas, educating you all about the Honorable Buffalo Soldiers. If you can recall, the first week, we talked about the Exodusters. And this week, we will be... Well, just check this out. This is where we left off. Can we just take the van? Nope. We already taught you how to land. Three, two, one. Man, what is this? Why I got these clothes on and y'all got regular clothes on? I don't know, but at least you landed on your feet this time. Well, Macedonia, we've made our way to Topeka, Kansas, where the Brown versus Board of Education was one of the cornerstones of the civil rights movement and helped establish the precedent that separate but equal education and other services were in fact not equal at all. In 1895, the 13th Amendment was ratified and put an end to slavery. Moreover, the 14th and 15th Amendment provided legal rights by allowing citizenship and the right to vote. Despite these amendments, many states enacted laws that led to the legal segregation of the races. These laws came to be known as Jim Crow laws, which forbade blacks and whites from using the same public facilities, riding the same buses, attending the same schools, and more. These laws would be challenged in court, and in 1896, the Supreme Court ruled in Plessy v. Ferguson that racially segregated facilities were legal as long as the facilities for blacks and whites were equal. The ruling established a separate but equal doctrine that would stand for a few decades. By the early 1950s, the NAACP was hard at work to challenge segregation laws in public schools by filing lawsuits on behalf of plaintiffs in states such as South Carolina, Virginia, and Delaware. The NAACP encouraged a number of African-American parents to try to enroll their children in all-white schools. All of the parents' requests were denied, including that of Oliver Brown. In 1951, Oliver Brown filed a class action suit against the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas after his daughter, Linda Brown, was denied admission to Topeka's all-white elementary school and was told to enroll her in a black school far from her home. In the lawsuit, Brown claimed that schools for black children were not equal to white schools. The case went before the U.S. District Court in Kansas, which agreed that public school segregation had a detrimental effect on colored children and that it was a contributor to the sense of inferiority. The case Brown versus Board of Education consisted of a consolidation of five separate cases that were heard by the U.S. Supreme Court concerning the issue of segregation in public schools. Thurgood Marshall was served as chief attorney for the plaintiffs. The justices of the Supreme Court were divided and unable to come to a solution. By June of 1953, the court decided to rehear the case in December of 1953. During the intervening months, Chief Justice Fred Vinson died and was replaced by Governor Earl Warren. Chief Justice Warren was able to bring all the justices to agree to support a unanimous decision declaring segregation in schools unconstitutional. May 14, 1954, the opinion of the court was delivered, stating that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Today, more than 60 years after the Brown vs. Board of Education, the debate continues over how to combat racial inequalities in the nation's school system. 
Macedonia. We encourage you to visit these sites and any other sites on your own so you can learn more about our rich history. Thanks for coming along with us on this tour. We'll see you all same time next year. Peace. Peace. Left to the right, top to the floor. When I say black history, say it's yours. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. And we say it loud and proud again. No All right, ready? Still recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah. Blah, blah, blah. Three. <laughs> Two. Give us some one. Girl, I don't like this. You you such an amateur. Facts are his and her story. People want to know why we still celebrate it. Road been rocky and we made it. We elated. Our survivors, strivers, fighters, singers. Get us dropping names like we have butterfingers. Rosa, King, X-Truth, the greatness. I leave.